Hello students, uh, today is the first module uh, of this uh, Space Spectrum Communication course. So, we will start with the introduction of Space Spectrum Communications. In this module, we will try to understand what is the meaning of spread spectrum communication, whether it what kind of communication system is it, what is the basic difference of this spread spectrum communications from the narrow band communication systems or conventional communication systems. With respect to the block diagram of a digital communication systems, we will try to understand what are the basic difference of this uh, block level uh, uh, understanding, if it is the basic difference of this space spectrum block diagram from the conventional block diagram of any conventional communication system. We will also try to understand a uh, brief history of this space spectrum communications and we will uh, also learn the key benefits of designing such kind of communication systems and we will end up with the different types of uh, such communication systems which are uh, useful for the practical implementation. Okay. Let us start. As the name suggests, it is a spread spectrum communication system. Please uh, check the term spread spectrum minutely. So, we are uh, designing a system where we are playing with the spectrum of a signal and as the name suggests, we are spreading the spectrum of the signal. The spreading means it has a under, um, underlined uh, part of it is we are having an additional modulation involved in the signal processing for spreading your signal and this modulation, additional modulation helps you to expand the signal bandwidth and the bandwidth, this expanded bandwidth is beyond the minimum required bandwidth for the data modulation. So, for example, uh, if I take a BPSK signal and uh, if it is uh, its minimal required uh, data, if it is a 1 Mbps uh, signal and uh, suppose 1 Mbps is the data rate required and um, we required 1 megahertz bandwidth at least to transmit this signal. Spread spectrum communication systems will require a bandwidth which will be higher than this 1 megahertz bandwidth. So, in the spread spectrum we will transmit the same 1 Mbps signal, but with higher bandwidth that is the meaning of spread spectrum signal itself lot of question immediately starts, why should we uh, communicate with a bandwidth which is more than the required bandwidth, uh, what are, are we getting some key benefits by doing this and what are those, if yes what are those benefits. So, let us first uh, understand what are the benefits because of which we are intentionally spreading the signal and some redundant bandwidth we are utilizing to uh, transmit uh, data for which the data modulation bandwidth is really far far below than the spread bandwidth. The space spectrum communication system is basically very very useful for certain cases. Number one, we by mean uh, by meaning of spreading the signal by doing the spread spectrum signal we can actually uh, suppress the interference. Remember, whenever we are talking about the interference, we are talking about a narrow band interference. The bandwidth of the interference will be much, much less than the spread spectrum signal or the spread signal. So, it may be the bandwidth of the interference may be in the order of the actual data modulation, but it is far, far less compared to the spread bandwidth. We will see later that how this suppressing of interference will happen only because of spreading the signal bandwidth in the due course. It also helps us for making interception difficult. Interception means uh, suppose you are a you are a communicator and you are communicating with an intended receiver. So, this is the intended transmitter receiver and communication needs to be established between these two and uh, take an example of a satellite communication going on from the ground surface 
uh, to the intended uh, satellite receiver. And uh, there is a flight uh, going on and which is actually the enemy flight and uh, he is having a communication system inside and his task is to detect whether actually some communication is actually going on from the surface to satellite or not. So, he will always try to intercept what is there on anywhere and whether if he understands what the frequency of your transmission is, he will try to also detect whether actually in that frequency there is some communication going on or not. If it is my enemy flight, he will also try to jam my signal. So, in now you see we are talking about a communication system where we are trying to design the communication system which will be resilient of having any interception from the enemy, which will also be actually uh, um, very stout and robust in the signal design in such a way, such that the low probability of intercept is inbuilt in the signaling system itself and the radio design itself. So, Space spectrum modulation or space spectrum communication or modeling uh, 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 giving an additional modulation by spreading the spectrum of the data underlying data modulation will help you to make the interception very, very difficult for the enemy. How again we will see? Uh, it also helps the spreading of signal, it also helps to accommodate the fading and multipath channels. What is these two terms? I should uh, say little bit. In a wireless communication uh, scenario, we know that when the signal gets transmitted with one transmitting antenna to a receiving antenna, this is a free space actually, it is a space within which the uh, electromagnetic waves will propagate between the transmitter and the, from the transmitter to receiver. And uh, the path is always not a direct path through which the signal flows from the transmitter to receiver. The signal also flows via the multiple paths which gets scattered or reflected from the different scatterers present in the environment and it reaches like this. So, like this the multiple paths are possible via multiple paths the signal reaches to the receiver. This is a very common phenomena that happens in a wireless domain and we call it a multi path propagation. And uh, because of this multipath channel concept and the fading, which is basically the attenuation and changes in the phase, attenuation in the amplitude and change in the phase of the transmitted signal with which you receive the signal at the receiver, you receive the signal at the receiver. With that whole concept of the fading and the multipath channels, your received signal needs to be uh, clarified, needs to be uh, cleaned up before your detection, demodulation and detection process proceed in the receiver circuit. Uh, space spectrum communication helps us to mitigate the fading and the fading due to the multipath uh, channels in the received signal a lot. It also helps us for the multiple access capability. What is this multiple access now is? Suppose you are in a wireless environment and you are using a typical technology to communicate with your receiver. And uh, then like you, there may be multiple users who are at a time trying to access the radio environment or radio channel to transmit their corresponding data to their own receivers. So, it is a multiple users simultaneously trying to access the wireless channel to transmit their data. So, then it is a multiple access of the same wireless channel is a very common phenomena in a wireless environment. So, how will you do it? You can understand that if lot of us trying to send our data simultaneously using the same frequency at the same time and the UVs the same bandwidth. So, there is high possibility that the signals from me and from my neighbor will collaborate and they will overlap with each other and uh, they will also create interference to each other. If some extra measure is not taken during the due process. 
and uh, so you need to take some uh, preventive measure to segregate the signal from the different users. The technique by means of which we can do it, uh, there are a lot of techniques available for this multiple access and to reduce the interference from the multiple users in the when the communication is going on and space spectrum actually gives a very nice uh, facility, it provides a very nice facility to provide this multiple access in a multi user environment. It enables the multiple using uh, multiple access capability because it uh, inherently uses different codes for the transmission. It, is different, it uses different codes to spread the signal of the different user data. We will see little bit uh, that some detail uh, of this uh, capability later on again. In the due course, we will also uh, address the different uh, multi user um, interference handling uh, techniques in the receiver with respect to the CDMA technology. So, these are basically the four different uh, uh, use cases that were for which the space spectrum communication systems are found to be useful for. Uh, there are some more also we will see in the coming, coming slides. Now, see one thing that when we are one may ask a question that when we are using the space spectrum signal. So, suddenly the signal bandwidth has increased and the minimum required bandwidth. So, in the receiver design, so I needed a wider bandwidth filter to filter the signal, I need to filter the signal after the after the antenna. So, once the filter bandwidth has increased, so as if am I not actually allowing the larger noise power to the my demodulator and the detector circuit later on, it may seem that we are allowing right. But remember, if I am thinking that the signal is uh, following a Gaussian process and a Gaussian noise is also applied on the top of it, then we understand by the fundamentals of the match filter that match filter sampled filter output will give, I, give me maximum SNR, which will be inversely proportional with the power spectral density of the noise. So, hence the output power of this uh, filter will be uh, the noise power at the output of this filter will be irrelevant and uh, hence there is no fundamental limit for us uh, to use the space spectrum communication. So, remember there is no fundamental barrier, there is no question at all to think that the noise power will be increased in such kind of the system and it will put a fundamental barrier in the implementation, it is really not thanks to match filter concept. So, let us come back to revisit the key features of this space spectrum communication system. Please remember, you, it, you may already got the idea that uh, space spectrum communication is very useful to give you a secure communication. So, as if the uh, communication system will be implemented only in the military purpose, it is no. The application may be in the military purpose as well as the commercial usage. Though it started with the military purpose, definitely yes, but later on it has got a very big success in the commercial uh, network also, commercial mobile communication network. So, there are for, uh, different reasons for which actually space spectrum communication became so popular. Actually, space spectrum communication gives you uh, gives your hide your signal below the noise floor. So, it makes you very, very difficult to detect whether there is a communication or there is not. So, it gives you very poor detectability, we call it the low probability of intercept, you cannot detect whether a communication is going or not. Number 2, it mitigates the performance degradation because of any inter symbol interference that is going on and also the narrow band interference already I have mentioned that when some narrow band interference will be there, we will get a gain on the top of it against that. It also rejects all the hostile jamming and uh, it can our unintentional interference may be actually interference coming from your other network who are unknowingly trying to give interference from you and it may be actually somebody intentionally trying to 
send high power in your transmission frequency band and trying to jam you and disturb your communication. So, it rejects the both, it rejects the intentional uh, jamming and it is also uh, helpful to reject the unintentional interference. Spare spectrum, it provides the inherent message privacy. If you cannot detect what the communication is about, if you cannot, your signal is buried in noise and uh, you are unable to detect something means your privacy of the message transmission is really very, very high. So, space spectrum communication is the first step, is the first means by means of which we provide security in the physical layer. Today, uh, you might have heard lot, uh, lot about the five layer security system, space spectrum communication is very, very fundamental step towards that. So, it will not allow any unauthorized listener to lag, uh, who is not having any knowledge what kind of typical code or the key you are using for spreading your signal. They will not be able and if he is not having any timing information, uh, if, uh, timing information of your signal, he cannot recover at all what you are transmitting, if he cannot crack the key definitely. So, spectrum also provide a very uh, coherent combining of the multiple path signals uh, by means of a typical receiver which we call the rate receiver and it helps us to provide a huge gain of the received signal to noise ratio because of this successful combination of our multiple path signals. So, what I mean to say here is uh, I showed you that in the trans wireless domain you are receiving signal not only over the line of sight path you are also receiving signal over the multiple reflected paths. These are called the multi paths. So, once actually the signals are received and these multiple paths, the signal via the multiple paths are received via the multiple delays associated to it. Once uh, these signals are there and you are receiving those signals and if you can capture those signals over their corresponding delay points and if you can successfully combine them we call the structure as a re receiver architecture, if we can do that. So, definitely actually all those multipath signals will help me to increase my signal to noise power. And uh, this capacity is there in a space spectrum communication system and uh, so coherent combination of the multipath signals can enhance our SNR in a rate receiver. Space spectrum communication can be, can be used for ranging and precision. What is this about? So, uh, listen one thing that suppose we earlier we understand for 1 Mbps transmission of a BPS signal, I need suppose 1 megahertz uh, bandwidth in a conventional narrowband communication system. In space spectrum communication system, 10 times of this bandwidth, suppose 10 megahertz of the bandwidth we are now utilizing. So, one actually one when we are using the space spectrum bandwidth, suppose this is the BN bandwidth BSS and this is the conventional bandwidth BC. So, when actually the bandwidth has increased, so you now see that in terms of the time, the whenever the bandwidth is really very high, it is a wideband transmission going on and whenever some wideband transmission goes on, actually in the tiny domain you can actually utilize this signal, wideband signal uh, for a precise localization because the tiny domain signal corresponding to the wide bandwidth is much, much less corresponding to the um, compared to the time duration or time signal of this BC. So, now you can have a fine resolution over the time axis. You can locate the information, you can get the information over smaller time axis over the over smaller time duration. So, it improves the precision of uh, precision of ranging, it can improve the useful information of the location and also the timing acquisition. So, anything related to localization, preci ranging precision, timing acquisition, all those activities which are very important task in our commercial communication systems they can be now performed by space spectrum communication. Space spectrum also allows then multiple users to sustain uh, within a within a given interference with a minimal interference with minimal interference in a zone of the geographical zone of communication and uh, hence uh, it is very it becomes actually uh, a key factor 
to develop the very famous communication technology which is the CDMA. So, we have got the very key features of this uh, spectrum communications uh, in this slide and uh, remember one thing we have uh, already been discussed I hope you have got. In a spectrum communication systems we have first of all we have a data signal and we have uh, some key and this key is helping us to spread the bandwidth of this data signal in uh, such a way that uh, we can get a lot of benefits listed here. But remember one thing, uh, so once you are increasing the bandwidth of uh, the signal here. Uh, the key is actually this is a space signal bandwidth. So, once you are using the bandwidth, increasing the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, remember that the gain of the transmitted, transmitted signal is decreasing and keeping the gain bandwidth product constant in the transmission system. We will revisit this concept once I show you the block diagram of such space spectrum communication system in the next few slides. Before entering into the detail of the mathematical expression of spectrum communication or block diagram, let us also revisit what are the major application scenarios of such design systems. Military is definitely, definitely a very important part because we need the secured communication for military and the defense application. And as spectrum communication gives us uh, uh, really uh, protection against the jamming, and uh, it has the inherent privacy, it has low power, low probability of intercept. So, military communication system has got the maximum application for space spectrum communication. A uh, very good example of such uh, system is Belstar. It is also used in the global positioning system because global position GPS is very, very famous for giving us the ranging precision, giving us the timing uh, as alignment over the multiple users and it gives us immunity to the multipath also. So, GPS based timing, GPS based localization we use data in our day to day life. Space spectrum communication is the key parameter to enable the system, enable the high ranging and high precision inside that system. Mobile satellite communication system due to the interference rejection, multipath protection and location acquisition. So, satellite communication system also prefers the space spectrum communication. Very good examples are the Omnitrax designed by Qualcomm, the Global Star designed by Qualcomm and Loral. And finally, comes the cellular communication or our famous the mobile communication due to the multiple access capability, capacity enhancement, your inter symbol interference, this stands for inter symbol interference mitigation property your multipath protection, interference rejection and your inherent message privacy, location acquisition because of lot of the good parts that are there in the space spectrum communication. In uh, cellular radio also it has got a very big hit and the example is IS-95 CDMA 2000 systems, WCDMA system uh, which are very famous actually in the up to the 3G communication systems in wireless. Next, uh, let us uh, have a very brief overview of the history who started, who where was the start point of this spectrum communication, who did it first and uh, who are the legendary people who led this uh, spectrum communication based research, especially the finding out the different keys, designing the keys, who are the main people are the, and the very famous people who have done and designed all those keys for us. It was 1941 when uh, Hedy Lamer and George Ankel uh, they filed a patent on the frequency hopping space spectrum communication systems and this is the first time actually somebody something is in uh, pain and paper. Prior to that we even if something has happened we are unaware of it and uh, we get the applications to the for uh, it was having a target with the applications to guided missiles at well, as well. And uh, the direct sequence signals here they were used for ranging and tracking a radar, which we call a tracking range radar system. 
and it was used in the jet propulsion laboratory and uh, in the jet propulsion laboratory and uh, it is the JPL who gave the term as pseudo noise to the direct sequence space spectrum systems from 1953. So, the first type of the systems which were actually got very big hit one was the frequency hopping system another was the direct sequence space spectrum systems. The earlier reported work on this uh, PN sequence systems or the N sequences they were investigated in early 1950s in the Bell lab and these are the group of the people Golomb and uh, Golomb et al who have worked a lot over the designing of the sequences later on. And uh, finally, actually uh, the earliest coherent space spectrum systems was first constructed and designed by Magnavox. And, uh, it was the code that he used inside that was uh, the gold code and the code was uh, the inventor was Dr. Robert Gold. So, the gold code this code we will uh, learn a lot and his property we will learn a lot in one of the modules in this whole course. We will also learn what are the other codes possible are getting used in practice for specific and communication systems including my M sequence also. And uh, the first tutorial on the space spectrum communications uh, in the literature you will find it was uh, written by Dr. Sir Charlie Chan and it was published by Magnavox. So, this about the brief history to know actually who filed the first patent right from the design of the sequences came then the first uh, such system was designed and remember Bell lab was uh, took a pioneer role to do the research in this field. This is a block diagram level of the basic system model of a space spectrum system and uh, we will try to just identify what are the basic difference between the conventional digital block uh, communication system block diagram and the space spectrum system block diagram. So, we understand that it is the input data and prior to that we have done input data that is coming and this is the channel encoding prior to that the source encoding and all has been done I am guessing. This is the channel encoder which helps us to encode the data uh, to give uh, protection against the channel fading, wireless channel fading. And this channel we are considering here to be mostly a uh, wireless channel. It can be any other thing also the coaxial cable or, or an optical fiber cable or C. In that cases, the channel code encoding will be different ball game. If it is a uh, wireless channel, we know a lot of the channel encoding techniques. For example, uh, the for example, the convolution code, the um, uh, also the conventional convolution code or the LDPC code or actually the combined coders, I mean concatenated codes where the RS and the convolution codes are combined and so on. Remember inside the modulator here, we mean that we are having both the data modulation as well as the extra modulation that is coming because of the spreading of the signal. So, data modulation and space spectrum modulation both are actually incorporated inside this modulator. And for what you need for the spreading of the waveforms, you need a PAC random sequence here. So, we have fed a sequence here which is helping me to spread the signal. So, basically the modulated signal here is coming in and if it is a modulated signal, we are actually um, basically multiplying with each uh, uh, code signal we call it a SC and then finally, the SM uh, multiplied with the SC is the spread signal that is coming out of this modulator box. The output of the channel uh, when it is entering into a receiver, we it is entering into a demodulator block. Remember this demodulator corresponds to the only space spectrum demodulation process, but this demodulator needs a very high and accurate information about your timing of the signals and uh, tracking is also an important part uh, that continuously needs to be going on uh, to acquire the pseudo random sequence to align the pseudo random sequences of the receiver to that of the transmitter. Uh, remember one thing we have assumed we have assumed here that the receiver and transmitter are in uh, they know both of them know here that what exactly is the key getting used for uh, uh, typical transmission at that moment. So, key is already shared. 
and uh, this demodulator does not encompass the data demodulator. After this phase spectrum demodulation, the actual data demodulation goes on and data detection, channel decoding, data detection, everything goes on. So, the basic difference that you are seeing from the conventional block is that we have a modulator, phase spectrum modulator with along with where actually the pseudo random sequence generator is feeding out and uh, this is the extra section in the transmitter and in the receiver we have the acquisition tracking circuit board and uh, a, a unit and also the demodulation unit an additional demodulation unit for the space spectrum communication uh, additively coming apart from your uh, additively coming on the top of your data modulation demodulation in the conventional communication system so these are the two blocks in the transmitter as well as correspondingly in the receiver we will be seeing in addition in this communication system and uh, uh, remember that tracking uh, acquisition we have called acquisition means the time sequence the acquisition of the codes as well as the signal as well as the carrier we need to do in the receiver but remember we also need to do a tracking tracking means you continuously when the data communication is going on you have to keep on track the uh, any changes whether any changes has happened on the phase frequency or time or not if it is there now the successful demodulation won't be happening in the receiver so, the SNR gain that we are talking about from the beginning itself, it means that very nice tracking should be going on in the receiver of such system that needs to be ensured. So, there are basically three properties of uh, that needed uh, for a signal to be declared as a space spectrum signal that we have learnt already. Number one should be it is a very uh, bandwidth very much much larger compared to whatever is required minimum. It should use a spreading code which we, we also sometimes call a key and it should have a dispreading process at the receiver which is done by correlating the receiver signal with a synchronized copy of the spreading code. Remember it is synchronized copy that means your tracking your acquisition time phase frequency acquisition is correct it is ideally done. And let us quickly revisit the mathematical formula of such communication system uh, we will try to now investigate how the information signal which is having a bandwidth of B is embedded in the larger transmitted signal which is having a bandwidth of B s. So, suppose there are the set of linearly independent signal S i t where i can have uh, 1 to capital M and this independent signals S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 to S m they are of bandwidth capital B and then have a time duration of capital T. So, you can write this S i t in the form of uh, S i j on phi j in terms of the basis function where the phi j t are the orthonormal basis functions and they have a span over n dimension or dimensional space. So, I can represent any signal by means of the orthonormal basis function and they can span over the n dimensional space. We have learnt it actually in a digital communication system if you uh, recall that we can write any signal that is transmitted over the space in its uh, by now by terms of uh, in terms of its orthonormal basis function over an n dimensional uh, space. So, this is the same thing there is nothing to do with the space spectrum yet. Uh, next uh, one of the signals we transmit at uh, over the time duration t and every time duration and uh, Remember actually the minimum number of the basis function that you need to represent all these signals will be actually twice B into capital T. And uh, since actually this all these signals S i t where i belongs to 1 to capital M they are linearly independent of each other. It also implies that this capital M should be almost equal to this 2 B t. And this is to embed this signal into a higher dimensional space with the space is suppose capital N, we need, need that this capital N should be very very large compared to capital M. So, the receiver now uses only the M branch structure where the i th branch correlates the received signal with the known signal S i t and uh, received signal with the S i t and the receiver output the, the receiver outputs the signal which corresponds to the maximum correlated output definitely. So, uh, suppose we have we generate the signals S i t using a random sequence. So, that the sequence of coefficient S i j are chosen and they are chosen based on some random sequence generation once again 
and each coefficient they are having some mean 0 and now the variance will be the total signal power E s divided by capital N because N is the n dimensional space over which we will actually express the signal. And uh, so, now the interfering signal also can be written as 1.2 in terms of their the same orthonormal basis function over the n dimensional space. And uh, the total energy uh, we are interested actually only over the duration of its uh, of this interference and let it, uh, it is having a duration of 0 to capital T. So, the energy can be easily obtained by this expression and where the energy let us define it as E j. So, we are having the signal as well as the interference let us now consider that at the input of the receiver we are receiving a signal where the original signal clubbed with the interference is entering. We for the sake of the analysis let us consider that there is no noise path associated with it. And now, the when the i th branch is correlating this input signal with the known signal S i t, then this will be the correlated output over the duration of capital T and we will be receiving the and we will be ending up after the correlation we will be ending up with uh, square of the intended signal plus some part of the interfering signal. And we can show that now the obtained signal to interference ratio because you are now ending up with the signal plus interference. So, signal to interference ratio will be governed by E s by E j into n by capital N as given in equation 1.5. Remember this result is independent of the distribution of the interfering signals definitely, because there is no where the distribution of the interfering signals are coming are controlling the S i n r S i r. If noise is there you have to compute the S i n r. Now, remember one thing in the previous uh, slide you please uh, notice that as my n is much much larger than m. So, there is a gain involved in the signal to interference ratio in a space spectrum communication. The gain that is increased the signal to interference ratio is increased now by an, a factor of capital N by M which we have referred here as the capital G and which we will call as a processing gain or the spreading factor. This is a very famous term that we will keep on using in the whole syllabus. Remember this is a processing gain. So, whenever you spread some signal you end up with a gain in the signal to noise power and uh, we call it a processing gain, but we are losing somewhere we are using the redundant amount of the bandwidth ok. At the cost of extra bandwidth you are gaining over the uh, signal to interference ratio your signal power at the end of the receiver it is much much increased corresponding to the interference power. And uh, in the bandwidth domain also it can be equivalently written in terms of the space spectrum bandwidth divided by the actual bandwidth required for the data modulation. Uh, to give you an idea, so usually in practical system design we keep this gain factor 10 to 1000 around ok. So, what is the underlying meaning of this gain? So, the underlying meaning of this processing gain is that that uh, now the B tether rate of uh, any modulation scheme with respect to my E d by N naught or suppose it is with respect to SNR let us say. Uh, if I go ahead with that and whatever the B tether performance we were getting I mean suppose we are getting a 10 to the power minus uh, 5 B tether rate at a at a speed of at a SNR of say 9.6 or 9.8 dB for my uh, BPSK kind of communication systems. So, now which actually the space spectrum communication depending upon the factor g that is actually involved here, we will get the same 10 to the power minus 5 with a much higher improved SNR. So, that gain the same 10 to the power minus 5 beta error rate you will be able to get with much less value of the SNR. So, that is the meaning where the gain is getting reflected on the performance of the system. So, always the space spectrum communication system will give you the better be a performance in the physical layer compared to the any conventional communication system. But remember all that gain is coming at the cost of your extra bandwidth involved in the system design. So, question is comes like this. 
So, we understand that when we uh, give the convolution coding or the block coding for the channel encoding process, it also improves the performance of the of the uh, whole system in the file layer and uh, it gives us uh, seeing the presence of noise as well as the interference, we get enhanced performance over the data rate. Uh, they also work by increasing the signal bandwidth, then whether will it be fine to go ahead with uh, block uh, or convolution coding, channel coding or you will go ahead with a space spectrum communication. So, to choose between these two, um, if you if you ask me right now that whether will we shall we go ahead with a forward air control coding or we shall go ahead with a space spectrum communication system, who will be good, who will be bad how to choose all that? The answer is it depends on the specifications of the system design itself and the requirements of the system which will give you this answer. And uh, first and uh, lastly actually we will end up with telling that uh, what are the different kind of the space spectrum communications used in practice. We have mostly the four types, one is the first one is the direct sequence space spectrum system second one is the frequency hopping space spectrum system, third is the time hopping space spectrum system and fourth is the hybrid combination of any three of uh, these guys. And uh, we have given a simple example, we will dis detail, uh, discuss in detail in the corresponding modules for uh, each and uh, for each of them and uh, we will see what actually the meaning of those space spectrum communication systems mean. But uh, here we will uh, try to see their glimpse of, we will try to get a glimpse of what is the uh, first one, the direct sequence space spectrum communication means. We were telling at from the beginning that we have a data, the ST here, the red line is the data that is suppose uh, required to be transmitted. And uh, this data is having a duration of T s, okay and this P, this uh, smaller green graph that you are showing going inside, this is the pseudo noise or this is the key or this is actually the code sequence the, that will actually help me to modulate my signal ST. So, the STT is the code sequence, ST is the data sequence, STT is the code sequence, STT is having uh, time duration of T c. So, now see actually we can have we are considering if we consider that T s and T c is chosen such that T s is uh, g times larger of T c, uh, then the g is the gain which is actually given by T s by T c further. So, once these two signals are multiplied, multiplied with each other, you will be ending up with this blue signal which is actually spread spectrum signal where which is ending up with this by multiplication of S T and S T T, where for the pause where the positive uh, part of the signal is there, you will not see any change of the phases of this S T, whereas in the negative during the negative pulse actually you will see lot of changes correspondingly happening for the for the pulses. And finally, once this multiplication is done now between the red and this uh, green graphs, green uh, graph and the green signals these two signals once they are multiplied and you are ending up with a spread signal, there is no existence of this T s finally, you are ending up with a spread spectrum signal with that individual duration of the pulses governed by the T c. So, if I see try to see this, so we have given here the expression for all those three and if I come back here and try to see the frequency domain what is going on basically. So, this is the spectrum of the mod data modulation or signal which is corresponding to S T, it is S F and it is having a bandwidth of uh, 1 by T s definitely because T s is the time duration of this signal. And uh, after the multiplication, we are ending up with the spread signal and uh, which will be governed by 1 by T c roughly. And uh, so, this S f is equally the convolved signal of S f into S t f. Now, this is transmitted finally. So, this was your S f signal was the actual signal you started with, you end up with the spread signal which is called S s f, you have transmitted this S s f through your transmitting antenna. So, this is a wide band signal transmitted through your transmitting antenna finally. At the receiver end, uh, you will be receiving the signal S t f into S t f and uh, we understand that this was my S f uh, spectrum 
and which was the bandwidth was 1 by ps i need to get it back remember when it was traveling over the channel there was an interfering signal called if which is a narrow band uh, interfering signal which has also entered into the receiver front end and see the situation the power of this uh, interfering signal is higher than the power of the spread signal another important part to notice when the signal was transmitted when the signal was spread the uh, bandwidth of this sf and the power of this total sf when the bandwidth has got increased the power is reduced so you are ending up here with a situation where the interfering signal clubbed with the spread signal has entered in the receiver we again multiply the signal this spread signal with their own known key i mean the same xc key once we do it the by default of the signal processing itself the spread signal actually comes back we go get back our original signal sf which we will uh, be filtered out by addressing by putting a low pass filter but what is happening with this if where that fc key is also getting multiplied with it so once that multiplication happens so now this signal is spread over a very wide bandwidth so now if you compare the signal received signal power after the modulation demodulation in the receiver the signal power is much much enhanced compared to the interfering power so this is um, pictorially uh, uh, and with the help of a graph this is the first level of understanding the way the space spectrum communication works how it can uh, reduce the effect of an interfering signals but uh, we will be uh, discussing this topic in detail uh, with corresponding to the each of these space spectrum communication systems in the coming modules